Hello, this is Chris Santini, principal of Central Cambria High School. We are going to review our 2020-21 course catalog, as well as some changes to next year's bell schedule. Um, so the purpose of this slideshow is to familiarize parents, students, and anybody who's interested with some changes that we have made to the course catalog. Um, again, we did some major revisions to this uh, prior to the current school year, and we have continued to make some improvements um, for next school year as well. Now, the slideshow um, and this video are best used while looking at the course catalog. And again, please make sure that you are looking at the course catalog that um, pertains to your child's year of graduation. So we're going to use the one for the class of 2024. That's our incoming freshman. Uh, there is a course catalog for the class of 2022 and 23, next year sophomores and juniors, as well as the class of 2021, which are next year's seniors. Some highlights of what we've done. Uh, we have more opportunities for all students at all levels, increase in access and equity um, to all of our courses. Our required health and phys ed, health and wellness course in ninth grade continues. And then we have um, elective phys ed um, to get the other half credit um, beyond that. We have increased our advanced placement course offerings from 13 to 19 over the next two school years. Uh, last school year, uh, we had four. So in two years, we've gone from uh, four up to 18, and we will go to 19 the following year. Uh, this year, one of the big changes that students will see is we have revamped our music and art offerings to increase options for students. And we have added a computer integrated manufacturing course to our Project Lead the Way engineering program. So let's get into the catalog. Page three includes the table of contents. So this is a quick way to find any information that you're looking for. Uh, the scheduling timeline is on page four. And this is something that parents will want to uh, make themselves aware of. We do have a parent infor information night for scheduling in the auditorium, 6 o'clock on January 28th. Um, so we will be available to answer any questions uh, that you may have about scheduling. Uh, the course catalogs were approved at the January board meeting, and they are 98% um, complete. Um, the only changes would be if we have additional courses that we're able to dual enroll um, in the future um, before the start of the school year. Uh, the key thing there with the scheduling timeline is that once again, our goal is to have student schedules available to them by the last day of school, um, just as we were able to do last year. Graduation requirements, uh, the class of 2024 um, required 25 credits. Um, these do vary based on the graduating class that your child is in. So please refer to the correct class and the correct course catalog uh, when looking at graduation uh, requirements. Scheduling requirements, all students are required to schedule a minimum of seven credits each school year. Uh, within the schedule, within the school day, a student can schedule eight credits. Um, and then if a student elects to take summer phys ed, that would be another quarter credit. So students can actually take 8.25 credits uh, per school year. Um, starting next year, students will not be able to schedule a course during their lunch period. Um, we, we've had a couple students that have done that uh, in the past, um, but next year lunch 
uh, will not actually be a class period. So we will talk about that toward the end of the presentation when we discuss schedules. Schedule changes in course withdrawal information on page six. Just make sure as a parent and as a student that you familiarize yourself with that. The key thing to note there is that, um, you know, if you take a course and you want to try it out like an AP course, um, you basically have the first 45 days of school um, to try it out. If you need to drop that course at that point, um, that's the time to do it. If you wait until after the 45th day of school um, for an AP or any other course, um, it becomes a withdrawal failing and shows on your transcript um, as a WF and counts as a 69% in the GPA. Example course sequences. Uh, this is on page seven. These are just uh, some information for parents and students when you're scheduling as to the sequence in which you need to take some of these courses and what you need to schedule each year of the high while you're at the high school. The planning worksheet is the next page, and this allows you to kind of sketch out uh, what you want to take over your four years of high school. We have many opportunities for students to earn college credits while at Central Cambria. The lowest cost is to take an AP course and pass the AP exam. Uh, the second lowest cost is to take a dual enrolled course where you receive a significant discount over the tuition that those dual enrolled partners would normally charge uh, if you took the course on their campus. So again, for next year, uh, we have 18 uh, AP courses available to students. We will be adding a 19th for the following school year. Um, and again, uh, just a wide variety there of AP courses. Many of those AP courses are also dual enrolled. Our dual enrolled courses can be seen um, in the appendices at the end of the course catalog. We have dual enrollment partnerships with St. Francis University, Mount Aloysius College, Penn Highlands Community College, and Rochester Institute of Technology. For the incoming ninth graders, uh, we are working on an opportunity for an associate's degree in high school. You would have two options for that. One would be through Mount Aloysius College and one would be through Penn Highlands Community College. Uh, our plan is to have the details on those finalized um, later this spring. And when those are final, we will hold a meeting uh, to give parents and students all of that information. Course weighting. Again, this is uh, this weight system should be should be the same for next year's ninth, tenth, and eleventh graders. Um, advanced placement courses are weighted at a 1.10. Dual enrolled courses are weighted at a 1.05, and all other courses are a 1.0. For next year's seniors, the class of 2021, uh, these weights are different. Um, so again, make sure that you're looking at the appropriate course catalog, which should have the correct weights based on your year of graduation. Once the class of 2021 graduates, all high school students will be on the new waiting system. Uh, the next page is the course waiting rubric. Uh, and this basically just gives you an idea generally of what to expect for each level of course that you may take while at Central Cambria High School. Obviously, you know, if you're taking an advanced placement course, you can expect that to be very rigorous. You can expect it to um, require a lot of work. Um, dual enrolled courses, again, colleges are granting credit for those courses. So they expect a certain level of work to justify the awarding of that credit. 
new for 2020-21 is the AP Capstone Diploma opportunity. And how this works is if a student scores a three or above on any four AP exams, and then also takes AP Seminar and AP Research with a score of three or higher, the student is eligible to receive the AP Capstone Diploma. The reason that we're offering this opportunity is there are a number of college applications which have a question on them, which is, you know, is the student eligible for the AP Capstone Diploma? We want our Central Cambria students to be, answer, to be able to answer yes to that question uh, if they so choose. The ESOP program, it's our Enhanced Student Opportunities Program. This encompasses all of the different varieties of course opportunities outside of Central Camber High School. So work experience, um, internships, college coursework taken off campus or online, online high school courses that the student may choose to take on their own time, independent studies. Uh, this basically describes how all of those opportunities will be handled on the student's transcript and in regard to graduation requirements um, and the GPA and all those kind of things. And there is an application form on the next page. Uh, so if a student is wanting to pursue something through the ESOP program, uh, fill the form out, turn it into the guidance office. April 30th is the due date for that form. Uh, we have decided to go ahead and list our student activities in the course catalog. Um, these are the student activities that we anticipate being offered for students next year. We have a variety of clubs, competitive academic teams, um, and other organizations within the school. And they're listed here along with their current advisors. Again, some of this information could change uh, before the start of the school year. And, you know, you have the link to the most updated uh, course catalog. So any changes we make in this document, you will see when you click the link that was sent out to you. And again, athletic programs um, at Central Cambria. Uh, we offer a wide variety of athletic programs, both PIAA sanctioned programs and those that are not sanctioned by PIAA. Um, if you have any questions about any of these programs, I encourage you to contact our athletic director, Randy Wilson. In the English department, In each course catalog, you will see we have broken our offerings down into general uh, pathway, a college prep pathway, and an advanced pathway. Again, all of our courses, we expect to prepare students to be college and career ready. Um, so as a ninth Greater your options for language arts are principles of comp and lit one or concepts of comp and lit one. You have the same options as a 10th grader. When you get to 11th grade, your options are concepts of comp and lit three or advanced placement language and composition. And as a senior, you have concepts of comp and lit four or ad advanced placement literature and composition. We also have a number of elective courses, broadcast news one. Broadcast News 2, Digital Publications and Public Speaking, and then the AP Seminar course will be new for the 2020-21 school year, and the following year we will um, institute the Advanced Placement Research course. As you navigate through the course catalog, you will see that um, our courses that are NCAA approved have the little NCAA uh, logo under the course title. If they're weighted, they have our Central Cambria 
weightlifting devil logo and if there is an exam attached to the course uh, they have the exam logo so for the ap course obviously the ap exam is required for concepts of comp and lit 2 the keystone exam is required and you will also see um, indicated if there is a dual enrollment option uh, for that particular course So again, these uh, all have a course description underneath. Um, they have the grade in which they should be taken, as well as the sequence uh, which they should be taken as well. Uh, for social studies, one of the new things uh, for this upcoming school year is for our ninth graders. If our ninth graders want to challenge themselves, feel like they're ready to challenge themselves with an AP course, uh, they may attempt Advanced Placement United States History, and that would serve as their ninth grade social studies, so they would not have to take the regular U.S. History course. Tenth graders have an AP option of Advanced Placement European History in place of World History. Eleventh graders have the option of taking Advanced Placement U.S. Government and Politics in place of Civics. And then we have a number of uh, elective options for students. We have Travel the Globe, Contemporary American History, Economics, um, AP Psychology, AP Macroeconomics, all within the Social Studies Department. And again, these descriptions will kind of give you an idea of what's going to be in those courses. Our next department is the science department. And these requirements up top are a little bit different based on your year of graduation. Uh, so this course catalog that I'm looking at, this is for next year's freshmen, the class of 2024. They will be required to have one and a half credits in biology, one credit in chemistry, and one science elective. So what's happening here next year, all ninth graders will be taking concepts of bio. Um, in the past couple years, we've had some take bio. We've had some take environmental science. Um, again, we're, we're trying to get everybody back on the same page. So we're going to do concepts of biology for all ninth graders, concepts of chemistry for all 10th graders. And then after that, uh, there are multiple options. Um, students could take environmental science. Um, as an elective, if they have not already taken it, or they can take physics, uh, they can take organic chem, anatomy, and physiology, uh, or they can get into taking some of our AP courses as a sophomore if they choose to do so. And again, here's the indicator if there is an exam attached to the course. So concepts of bio, the exam is the keystone. Um, and you will see, for example, AP Physics 1, the exam that's required is the AP exam. Now, again, students have the option of taking uh, the AP exam or not taking it. Um, if students take the AP exam, they are then exempt from the final exam for that course. In the math department, this is one that uh, sometimes we get questions about uh, because students are on a different um, pathway depending on the math that they take at the middle school. So for some of our kids who really excel at math, they may be taking Algebra 1 in 7th grade. They would then take Algebra 2 in 8th grade, Geometry in ninth grade, Pre-Calc Trig as a sophomore, and then an AP Calc AB as a junior, AP Calc BC as a senior. We also have AP Statistics available, AP Computer Science Principles, and AP Computer Science A. Um, again, in our general pathway, Math 7, Math 8, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and then Concepts of Geometry or Personal Finance. Um, and, you know, if... If you took Algebra 1 in 8th grade, no problem there. 
Take Algebra 2 as a ninth grader, Geometry as a 10th grader, Pre-Calc Trig in 11th grade, and you can take AP Calc, AB, you can take College Calc, you can take Personal Finance, you can take AP Stat as a senior. Uh, you have lots of options available. Our computer science program is tripling in size in terms of offerings for the 2020-21 school year. Uh, during this current year, we're running AP Computer Science Principles uh, through a grant from Amazon. Um, and next year, that grant has been extended. So we're going to offer an intro to computer science course. Uh, that's a course that any student should be able to have success in. We're going to continue offering AP Computer Science Principles. And then we're also going to offer AP Computer Science A. Uh, AP Computer Science Principles and Intro to Computer Science do not require any previous computer science background. The AP Computer Science A, it is probably a good idea if the student has taken Algebra 2, and it is also probably a good idea if they have had some type of computer science course in the past. Um, again, it, it, it's recommended, not necessarily are required for AP Computer Science A, but we encourage any student who's interested in any of these computer science courses to sign up and give it a try. Our project Lead the Way uh, engineering program is expanding. Uh, we are going to be offering a computer integrated manufacturing course for next year. And that is basically a course where students will learn how to create uh, models of three-dimensional products on the computer and then program that into a CNC machine, which will then manufacture the product according to the drawing that the student has produced. And that class also gets into, you know, the manufacturing process and all of those aspects of that. We have our civil engineering and architecture course, which is currently running uh, this year. And we also have our principles of engineering course available to students. All three of these courses can be dual enrolled through Rochester Institute of Technology if the student scores the minimum required score on the end of course assessment. In the business education department, uh, the main change here, it's not completely a change, but uh, the accounting to small business management class uh, has currently worked this year on getting our school store started up. And next year, uh, they will be running that store uh, on a daily basis during our Red Devil advisory period, which we will discuss more at the end of the presentation. Uh, we have enhanced our visual arts offerings. We are including multiple levels of drawing and design, multiple levels of painting and printmaking, and multiple levels of photo and digital media. <clears throat> we are adding a couple of new courses. One is portraiture and figure drawing and one is arts and crafts. We also, um, based on some of the feedback from the survey that we put out to students about courses they wanna see in the future, um, one of those courses was a course that would involve sculpture and three-dimensional art. Uh, so we are adding the advanced placement 3D art and design course for next school year. We think this is going to be a great opportunity uh, for our art students to really take their skills to the next level and showcase what they're able to do. The other department where we've had major changes, you know, last year, the phys ed department saw the biggest changes of any department in our new course catalog. This year, it's the music department. So we currently offer two options to students. That's concert band and concert chorus. We're now going to have 
a great deal of additional options added to that. We will have a Guitar 1 course for beginners. We'll have a Guitar 2 course for students who already know how to play the guitar. We're going to start a jazz band. Pretty pumped about that. Uh, we're going to start a musical production course uh, to get kids interested in performing in our school musical. We will have a select choral group called the Red Devil Singers. Uh, this group will focus on performing out in the community uh, and at local events. We will have a digital music technology course. Um, again, if you've if you've been around music, done anything with music, followed music, um, you know that the digital revolution is upon us. And so we want our students to be prepared uh, with some of those skills. And then finally, again, based on, based on uh, feedback from our survey, uh, students were interested in a music theory course. So we're gonna offer AP music theory uh, for next school year. So this will allow our art students and our music students to have an AP option uh, during their time at Central Canberra High School and will allow them to have a weighted course uh, in an area that they are interested in. The World Language Department, um, new for 2020-21, is that uh, within our new schedule, Eighth grade students will be able to take Spanish one or French one during their elective class period, and they will not have to um, miss part of their English class in order to do so. So we're hoping that that um, leads us to some, some good numbers in those eighth grade sections. And then in a couple years, um, hopefully we'll be able to offer an AP Spanish and possibly an AP French. Uh, if we have enough students who make it through the four levels that lead into that. Family and consumer science. This has been missing from Central Cambria High School's course catalog for many years, and we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back in limited form, uh, but we're going to offer a senior foods class for next year. We'll be, we will be able to offer two sections of this. And basically, it is exactly as described. It will be a class that focuses on food preparation skills, and it will be only for students who are seniors. So the class of 2021 uh, will be able to sign up for that course. Health and Phys Ed, we continue with our required health and wellness course for all incoming freshmen. And then beyond that, students have to earn one credit of health and PE in order to graduate. Uh, and we have many options available for them to do so. We have a strength and conditioning, functional fitness training course. We have a strength and conditioning, yoga, mindfulness, and flexibility course. We are going to put a lifeguarding and aquatics course in. Um, through that course, students will be able to become certified lifeguards. We are continuing with our very popular team and individual competition course. And we are also continuing with summer physical education. We have the early morning athletic development course in the course catalog for next year. Uh, last year, we did not have enough students interested to run that, but we will put it in there. And if students would like to sign up, if we have enough kids interested, uh, we will run that course. So again, lots of options there for phys ed. Um, and again, students can sign up for as many phys ed courses as they want to. Um, these are listed as half credit courses. Um, students can sign up uh, for those courses multiple times, you know, if they choose to do so, if they want to take as if they want to take more phys ed than what is required. Uh, something new in our course catalog that we did not include in the past are our internships. And these are interesting opportunities for mostly seniors, maybe some juniors who are on pace to uh, have enough credits for graduation. We have an office internship. Uh, these students help out in the offices of 
the middle school, the high school, or either elementary school. We have a library internship uh, where they help uh, operate the library. Our tech interns uh, do all kinds of different tasks uh, to help out with technology and, and learn how that whole system works. We have our athletics internship where these students work with our athletic director to prepare our facilities for athletic events, setting up, tearing down, preparing fields, um, collecting and storing equipment. Now we have our learning support internship where our students uh, assist with special needs students in our MDS classroom. And then we have school to work for students who um, do not attend Admiral Peary Votech but would still like to uh, go to work uh, for part of their school day. We have the school to work option. Our Admiral Perry Vote Tech uh, offers many programs to our students. Uh, those programs are listed here. Um, one thing to note there um, is that our sophomores go in the morning and our juniors and seniors attend the PM session at Admiral Perry. Uh, page 49 includes our NCAA course of study. These are approved NCAA courses. And as Mr. Wilson is able to get additional courses approved, uh, we will add courses to this list or take courses away, you know, if they have been retired at Central Cambria. Again, we encourage parents of students who are considering competing at the NCAA level to go to the NCAA Eligibility Center website and familiarize yourself with the requirements of what um, your student needs to take in high school to be eligible as a freshman in college. Appendix B, dual enrollment courses through Penn Highlands. Appendix C, our dual enrollment courses through Mount Aloysius College. Appendix D, our dual enrollment courses through St. Francis. And Appendix E, our dual enrollment courses through Rochester Institute of Technology. That brings us to the end of the course catalog. Uh, the highlights there, more options and opportunities for all students. Increased choice and flexibility for all students. And again, we've tried to bring the variety of a large high school and combine it with the community feel of a small school. So we think we have a wider range of academic options than any of our peers in the area. We have more AP courses available to our students than anyone in the area. Uh, and we are working to increase our elective offerings so that they will be second to none uh, to any other district around. Scheduling timeline, again, uh, teachers are discussing uh, this week their recommendations, their course recommendations with students, um, kind of giving them some guidance on what they should sign up for for next year. January 28th, we will have a parent information night for scheduling in the auditorium. After that meeting, parents are free to email or contact teachers with any questions regarding course recommendations. And then students will be able to enter their course requests into Skyward. Uh, Mid-February, the guidance counselors are going to meet with all students in their English language arts classes to review their course requests and other scheduling information. And then March 16th, final course selections will be made available to parents and guardians through Skyward. And then you have until March 31st to request any changes to what you have requested. May 29th is our target date to have student schedules completed in Skyward. And then June 15th, we will have student schedules viewable um, through Skyward for at least 48 hours. And then there are limited reasons at that point that you can request to change a course um, up through June 30th. And then the first day of school, probably earlier in the first day of school, but certainly by the first day of school, final student schedules will be posted and viewable through Skyward. 
we're adjusting our bell schedule for the 2020-21 school year. Uh, we will be starting homeroom five minutes sooner. We'll be shortening homeroom by a few minutes. Each class period will be shortened by one minute. Um, lunch will be a half hour. So students will not have to schedule lunch as one of their nine periods. Uh, lunch will be its own separate time. And what that's going to allow us to do is at the end of the day, we will have a half hour ninth period called Red Devil Advisory. And during that period, during that Red Devil Advisory, um, there will be many things that are going to be taking place. So the reason that we're changing our schedule a little bit, um, our schedule currently contains no time for students to receive extra help from teachers unless they are lucky enough to have a study hall when one of their teachers is available. During Red Devil Advisory, all teachers will be available for students to get help from. Uh, for students who are leaving early for activities such as sports or other performances, um, they will miss less instructional time uh, because the eight period day ends at 214 and then Red Devil Advisory is 214 to 244. We're going to run our clubs during Red Devil Advisory. It's a big piece of student life that really doesn't exist at Central Cambria right now. Um, our student activities and clubs currently only meet once every two weeks and they all meet at the same time. So if a student wants to be in multiple clubs, they're stretched pretty thin trying to get to different meetings at the same time. Uh, next year, we'll be able to schedule those clubs on different cycle days and students will have many opportunities to participate um, during the school day. We are also planning to run an SAT prep course during Red Devil Advisory. That's something that in the survey uh, students asked for, but we have a lot of students who would not want to take that as a course for credit because uh, it might hurt their GPA if it's not weighted. So it's going to be something that we run out of Red Devil Advisory um, and that will be available to all students. And then this will also help us better align with Admiral Peary Vote Tech schedule, um, the PM program. Uh, our kids will be in good alignment with that, and they will miss less time of the AM program uh, with our new schedule. As always, if you have any questions on any of the information that has been presented, I encourage you to contact me at any time, 472-8860, extension 2001, or shoot me an email at ccantini at be happy to answer any questions that you may have.